Hi lovely people, welcome to today's video. So uh, I managed to find a copy of Airfix Model World. For some reason, despite it being out quite early um, in um, September, uh, my local Smiths, for some reason, their magazine rotation, as in taking old magazines off and putting the new ones out, has taken a massive dive bomb. Um, there's still um, monthly magazines out from two months ago. Um, so yeah, God knows what's going on there. But anyway, Airfix Model World, issue 143, October 2022. Let's dive straight in. I haven't really had much chance to look at it. So we've got this great looking meteor on the front. A rather unusual looking, um, it's, it's a World War One Canuck Raider and a, another tornado. So we get our intro page and then onto the contents. So looking at this, this is a 132 scale tornado. Um, Italeri by the uh, blurb. Uh, we've also got this lovely uh, spit here, which is an intermediate build. That's a 148 scale build. We've got Airfix's uh, T4 trainer here. Um, and the difference with this T4 is that if you just buy the kit and not the starter set, uh, you get two color options um, for this kit. Uh, I bought the start set, so I'm stuck with the red option with those decals, but it's not a major problem. Really nice and unusual looking paint scheme for this de Havilland Vampire. And then we've got a 1 3 50th scale uh, build here, which is um, it says fighting a Rothesy, so I'm assuming that's going to be HMS Rothesy but we'll wait and see and then we've got some uh, back to basics uh, tutorials here right so first look airfix have retooled their 124 scale spitfire um, and obviously releasing it it looks like you get five color schemes in this kit and this is obviously just the first look at that new tool kit and it does look good looking at some of the the detail on here the interior is equally impressive separate side walls individual bulkheads and all fittings are supplied etc i know that their recent 124 scale kits that they've tooled and produced have been quite exceptional so Airfix News, recent uh, releases, we've got 148 scale um, Westland Lynx, Sea Lynx, uh, the Dornier DO17, the Harrier GR7 or GR9, and Japanese Infantry and Russian Infantry in the uh, 176 scale. And we'll also get a 1600 scale HMS Fearless. Um, Kinetic are releasing a Cheetah South African Air Force. S-A-S-S-A-A-F. Uh, six in Kinetics line of kits depicting the Mirage 3. Uh, derivative is a fresh, iter a fresh iteration containing new parts for the South African Atlas Cheetah D. And we've got 132 scale BF109G here. From Zuke Mura. Okay. Wondrous Wildcat, first look. Anticipation regarding Edward's new tool, 148 scale, F4, F3 Wildcat, which was a US naval fighter during World War II. Again, looking nice. It seems to include some PE as well. Okay, news. So, Special Hobby goes mad. Special Hobby has gone back to reissue a quarter scale kit of an unusual and fascinating type of Grumman, or Grumman, however you want to pronounce it, AF3 Guardian. Okay, 
so that's that kit. We've got some Revel releasing some 3D puzzles, Dino Delights. Um, and we've got aftermarket sci-fi treats. So what we what are we looking at here? Modelers who enjoy either scratch building sci-fi subjects or the Star Trek franchise will find much on offer from Czech aftermarket specialist Green Strawberry. So we've seen some of their stuff where they've done aftermarket kits for some of the Revel stuff like H um, USS Voyager and stuff like that. Uh, so Polar Light 1 1000 USS Voyager. Uh, for those building spacecraft from scratch, the Griebel plating, which is this, is a boon for ready-made detail, providing a selection of features found on kit bash starships from many firms. So yeah, plenty, plenty to look at with regards to um, upgrading some of your favorite sci-fi kits. The model show guide, I will obviously photograph and chuck that in um, so that you know what's going on around the country. Here's our 132 scale Tornado. Uh, Italeri's long awaited 132 scale Tonka provides Dean Large with an enjoyable memento of his younger plane spotting days. It's a nice looking kit. Um, is this an IDS? It says GR4. Um, but this is, I don't know, did they call this air superiority grey? Somebody let me know in the um, comments. Um, resin instrument panels were found to be better 3D representations of the PE parts so these were used despite the difficulty matching colours with the rest of the cockpit. Um, yeah so Edward PE parts were used in this. This is an intermediate build. The kit is a Tornado GR4 by Italeri, 132 scale, it's £145. Wow, hobbyco.net, you will find that. But it does look good. Look at these, these ejector seats, fantastic. Liking the look of those. Um, and the cockpit tub, nicely detailed. Landing gear bays. She does look really nice. It does say that you have the option of putting one of the engines on a cradle for display beside the model. Yeah, I like it. I mean, it's, it's not something I would buy, but I do like it. Uh, Northland Exhibition. And then a touch of colour. So these are like their, their back to basics in painting. They're using one of the Airfix Air starter sets here. And this is the Amiens Raider. Tony Confora builds a Copper State Models 135 scale Canadian MG carrier. A vehicle with resemblance to modern day infantry fighting vehicles. So, I mean, obviously, um, horseless carriages were still fairly, you know, pretty much in their infancy when World War One broke out. So, some of their stuff looks really, <laughs> really clunky. I'm looking at this and I'm thinking this would be a really good steampunk conversion as well um, but anyway Canadian armored MG carrier machine gun carrier copper state models uh, it's 135th and it's 33 euros euros rather uh, copperstatemodels.com you can get this from and it looks good nice chassis detail the floor plan the floor pan looks good you know lots of planking detail and stuff um, the wheels 
to be honest, they look like they've just been robbed off the um, stagecoach. But yeah, fantastic, really interesting. Imagine if uh, the SAS had had their origins in World War One. That this would have been right up their street. Um, we've got some full size photographs here, full size vehicles, quite a mix. You've got some uh, recovery vehicles, you've got some prime movers, uh, some armor, some uh, troop transport trucks, uh, a landy. So yeah, Overlord show this was in Hampshire. Whereabouts in Hampshire? The Lawns Denmead, Hampshire. Okay. Organised by the Solent Overlord Executive Military Collectors Club. So, yeah, this is the basic build for the trainer that could. Now, I have one of these. I also have the Matchbox Strike Master, which I will do. I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a side-by-side -side build when I can get round to it of the T4 and the Strike Master. So, the T4 is something that was produced this newer tooling from airfix was produced not long ago um somewhere in the 2010s i think it might be, i, I want to say 2014. um and obviously the strike master from airfix is a much older kit uh being uh, produced early 80s i want to say um, I did do a review for uh, the Strike Master and the T4, um, so if I remember, I will link those in the description below. But here we go: Hunting Percival, Jet Provost T4 by Airfix. Uh, it's 172 scale. It's £10.99 from Airfix.com. It's a nice colour scheme. I like it. They've gone for a, a hard line between the um, camouflage schemes so we have the um, underside color scheme um, and then obviously the two-tone on top so there you go right fighting rather sea HMS Yarmouth finishing its sister ship HMS Plymouth right Okay, what have we got? The Royal Navy's Rother Sea class frigates were developed in response to improvements in Soviet submarine capabilities following World War II. 1945, it was considered that future escort ships should be capable of achieving at least 25 knots, but this changed after Soviet scientists managed to obtain late war German submarine technology. This meant wartime surface submarines were replaced by types capable of 20 knots underwater during the 1950s, essentially making many of the Royal Navy's late war destroyer conversion types, uh, 15 and 16, and frigate classes obsolete, obsolescent. The UK solution was a dedicated anti-submarine frigate with six of the new design known as Type 12, Whitby class, intended as high-speed ocean-going convoy escorts. So there you go. So this is 135 scale. Um, so you've got a tiny little wasp on the uh, helicopter pad. Wow, I like that. Nice little navy wasp. So this is an advanced build, they're saying. And as you can see, um, there's a little round all photo here of the wasp. And then they give some information how they did the uh, the sea surface. Right, exclusive build, marvelous meteor, 172 scale. Airfix release. Kev Baxter was delighted to preview the latest and arguably the greatest Airfix release in 172 scale to date, a newly tooled Gloucester Meteor F 
8. It's a lovely colour scheme with just the plain aircraft aluminium with a blue tail and we've got the um, squadron markings here, this uh, wavy line. Um, so if you're going to buy this, it's obviously from airfix.com, it's going to cost you £23.99. Gloucester Meteor F8. Obviously, if you are a member of the Airfix Modelers Club, I believe you get 10% at checkout. 10% off at checkout. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that, if I remember rightly, that's um, that's what happens. So the blue color scheme the silver and blue color scheme is county of kent 500 county kent squadron royal auxiliary air force raf west mauling in kent and they also do a 74f squadron raf horsham raf horsham st faith norfolk and then they do one for 305 squadron belgian air force Beauvichain, Belgium. But yeah, that's that's. I like it. Competition, Revel Advent sets. <clears throat> oh, that's cool. Do you know what? I may enter. I'll have a look at that, and I may enter. Right, Sweet Sixteen. Uh. Edwards 148 scale Supermarine Spitfire Mark 16 with the additional parts supplied by a recent Profi Pack edition. So this is an intermediate build. Uh, we're looking at a silver coloured Spit. Um, Spitfire Mark 16 bubble top by Edward. It's 148 scale. It will cost you £19.62 from edward.com. So plant, there's, there's uh, this is what, the second one of three aircraft that are, and I'm assuming again, that this is just gonna be unpainted, polished aluminium, aluminum. And this, this is this, I love this color scheme. I don't know what it is that appeals to me about this color scheme. But I just love the black and like orangey red stripes on this uh, Swiss um, aircraft. I do have to say, I did read this article and it says in the opening paragraph here, uh, Switzerland took delivery of the first three de Havilland vampires in July 1946. Although the first of these lasted only a week before being written off, in a takeoff accident. Um, obviously, I do hope that nobody was injured and the pilot walked away from that, but that's gotta look bad on your flight record, isn't it? We've got these new planes, try not to break them. Um, but hey, so DH100 Vampire FB6, Pinocchio nose. Uh, by Special Hobby, uh, 172 scale, 17 euros 50 from Special Hobby Stockists. So it doesn't give a website or anything like that. But this is a basic build. Again, I, th I, th I think this is a really striking aircraft. Do you know, I thought this might have been like a, when I first saw the color scheme, I thought it might have been a drone for target practice. But no, this was, this was um, something that they, Uh, did um, Swiss air colors and those big old red and white crosses on it as well the side profile photograph here just it's really something else just looking at it it is something else There you go, Swiss Vampire. 
So we're coming into on the shelf. We've got some uh, Yad Panther tank destroyer reference material. Operation Allied Force, uh, air war over Serbia in 1999. Uh, P-51B stroke C Mustangs. Uh, American Chevrolet trucks, World War II. Uh, Fubuki class destroyers and USAFE. USAFE, is that United States Air Force England or Europe? Because it says in the United Kingdom in the Cold War 1950 to 1992. So is that United States Air Force England or United States Air Force Europe? Uh, we then got an F-14, uh, 24 Panzer Rex. So this is interesting. German armor, 1944-45. Lee Archer's own words, the latest installment in Panzer Rex has gone back to its roots, offering a selection of imaginary, of sorry, of imagery showing wrecked tanks across Europe late in World War II. Interesting. And then we got reference book for the Dakota. Kits. We have a Hawk Major over Spain, 172 scale. We have a 135 scale MD500 Defender. Uh, an F6C Mustang, uh, 172 scale. Uh, 148 scale F84F Thunderstreak. Uh, 172 scale Piaggio P108B Quadrimotor and then a 148 scale MiG-27 Flogger. Continuing with armour, we have 172 scale Stug from Dragon, an Italeri 135th scale M109, A2, A3 and G. A 3.7 FLAC 37 truck in 135 scale. A 10.5 centimeter Geschertswagen uh, FCM 36F uh, in 135 scale. We have a 135 scale Unimog. And then we have a 135 scale uh, SDKFZ 247 off speed with MG34. On the shelf, first look, Aria, the Hunter's Poem, Anime Biker Girl. So this looks like an interesting build, change of scene, um, you know, something different, change of scenery. It says here, by Suata, approximately 112 scale, 89.99 from backman.co.uk. And then we have some further, we have a 135 scale G7107 US cargo truck. And we have a 135 scale Silverside 1947 PD3751 bus. And then we have a 124 scale Golf GTI first series 1976-78. That takes me back. And then decals. So what do we got? Decals. Aftermarket decals. We've got A10C Hoosier Hawks for 132 scale and 172 scale. Uh, F4E Phantom 2 decal line. These are for uh, Egyptian Air Force Phantoms. Um, 1144 scale, so this looks like it's going to be a civilian airline. Decals for Jet Air 727 100. Uh, low vis insignia and data sheets, 132 scale. So these are aiming to replicate low vis Air, uh, US Air Force, Navy, or Marine Corps aircraft and helicopters. So they're just generic markings. Uh, Polish Army 1945 to 65. 135 scale decals and Falkland Islands helicopters and Army de l'air beavers. Uh, yet more Gallic and British aviation is represented on Model Art's latest decal sheet. 
with, which commemorates the 40th anniversary year of the Falklands conflict with a collection of 10 British helicopters, Royal Air Force and Royal Navy Sea Kings are included, plus the latter's Wessex. But on a tangent, it also supplies marking for two French DHC-2 Beavers. Um, ideal for airfixes, 172 classic kit. And it's got Sea King, uh, one, two, three, four Sea King variants. Five seeking variants, Wessex, two Wessex, three Wessex, four Wessex, five Wessex variants, and some DHC twos. So these are all 172 scale. Uh, we have Bulgarian Arrows, 148 scale. Uh, Raphael C 4GR Solo Display 2021. So this looks like a um, very uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, bespoke uh, colour scheme for a Raphael. Raphael. Um, in 172 scale. Uh, Modelers who favour to sort aircraft now have a smart rendering of the French Air and Space Force 2021 Raphael C solo display scheme. So there you go. And US Navy Blue Angels FA 18A BCD 1987, 2001, and 2006 seasons. We're coming into some aftermarket parts now. Um, we have some UB 32A24 rocket launchers, some SR 71 interior for 148 scale, um, chipmunk extras. These look like they're all for uh, there are a few major kit releases that escape the Edouard treatment and Airfix 148 scale new tool chipmunk trainer was always going to be a focal point as such the firm has released the following items so we got a set of masks for the interior glazing and all three wheels uh, we have a larger masking set offering all the items in the set described above, but also for the interior canopy framing for added depth of finish. Um, compromising plain and pre-coloured photo etched metal, this fret provides layered instrument panels, uh, seat belts, uh, I think this is wheel trims, etc and another PE fret but for larger plain brass frame offering new and more refined engine cowling panels. So there you go. Uh, medium coarse brass chain. Um, some wing tanks here. 148 scale SBD5 twin machine gun. So yeah, plenty, plenty in the aftermarket parts coming up. Uh, Carly floats, one three fifty of scale. Uh, PT one hundred nine life raft for a one forty eight scale. Uh, PT torpedo boat. Napalm tanks, one seventy two scale. Um, one forty eight scale Harrier nozzles for GR one and GR three. So yeah, we're getting plenty. Plenty of aftermarket parts to look at. And then HP Victor, all versions. 172 scale, interest among models for spraying national insignia and other markings instead of using the kit or aftermarket vessels. This means there is no silvering risk. So, dead designs set for the Airfix kit will suit many. Early and late style fin flashes and randals are supplied in this pre-cut adhesive package. Okay, so, pre-cut masks. Right, coming into the final bit of advertising for the magazine and then display case. So there's a nice buccaneer there and a really nice red tail. Cool, so there you go. That was this month's Airfix Model World. I had a bit of trouble getting it to begin with. Um, hopefully the Smith's store that I normally get my magazines from will have sorted out 
their issues um, by next month. Anyway, take care and I'll see you again soon. All right, bye-bye.